ended up piece like five years ago was like we got to do it and uh, we pulled it out in the year that we ended up having COVID and so uh, we actually never got to play it that year which was, was which was sad, but I'm so glad that we were able to play that piece uh, this year, which has been awesome. They did a great job. Um, the next piece that they're setting up for is very a very interesting piece. Um, Nathan Daughtry wrote it as well. It's called uh, Prism Schism, and his whole idea of this piece was literally to make it be a, a spectrum of sound, the largest sounds that you can make with instruments. And so he wrote it for melodic instruments. And it was actually not written the way that you'd expect to see music actually written. And so it could be played with melodic instruments. And then he said, you know what, play it with wooden instruments. And then play it with drums. And then play it with metals and trash cans. And um, it's a really cool piece. And then put it all together so that you have this sonic sound of, of music being played. And uh, it's really kind of neat because, again, the traditional music staff has you know the, the notes and spaces. but and, they would know how to read that, but it was all on one line, and he would put like F, G. <laughs> and he would put like an X when it was supposed to be a G, and then he would all of a sudden change it later into a C or a D. And so the kids, the mal players had to kind of do some different brain switching on this, which is really kind of cool. But the coolest part about this piece, in my opinion, is um, we have our whole percussion studio out here playing this at one time. Um, we are, when, when people tell you about having, you know, you never work a day in your life, if you, you know, if you enjoy your job, this is what I get to work with every day. 90% 90, 90 of my day I get to spend teaching these guys percussion, which is a, a true joy. Now, there's not many people that can say that in the, in the music field. And so every single day I see not this whole group, not, not as one, but I see them all day. And it's awesome. And so for us to be able to put something together with 34 percussionists, uh, and considering they don't have class always together, it's pretty awesome. So uh, uh, this piece is called On the Spectrum, and uh, I think it's, I'm sorry, Prism Schism. I don't know why I said that, but who knows. Um, anyhow, so it's Prism Schism by Nathan Daughtry. Are we ready? All right, Prism Schism.
Awesome. One of the things I forgot to say about that piece was um, it's also pitched high to low, high to low instruments on that. And so hopefully you heard some of that pop out. Um, as they're switching for the, the next thing, um, which will be the uh, wind ensemble for percussion. Um, that piece, uh, you know, they did it, well, the last two groups have done it without a conductor. And um, part of my belief as a percussion, as a percussionist, is not to always have to conduct. If I can, it doesn't matter to me if I conduct or not. But the way I was trained was internalized the beat. Our job as percussionists is to keep the beat. And so the fact that they're doing it off without a conductor, communicating to each other, thank you, sir. Um, the fact that they, they're they communicating to each other, sometimes you'll see them pulsing, sometimes you'll see them nodding their head. They don't always necessarily tap their foot, but they'll, they'll internalize that beat. And for them to do it by themselves without a conductor is, is definitely uh, an amazing thing. And uh, that's something that we're working towards every single year, every single group. And uh, to be honest with you, it's super fun to watch them do that. In fact, um, at, at Walton, there was some very phenomenal percussion ensembles, and they they were one of the few groups that only had like the conductor maybe one one time, and so uh, that's props to their musicianship and the training that they've had. So it's something really awesome to watch. Um, the next piece that we're going to play is it's a, a, a new composer that's uh, named Francisco Perez. A couple of years ago, we played one of his pieces called Aether, and um, he just he's a new artist and just has a lot of cool ideas. The way he develops his sounds is really really super awesome. And uh, this piece is called Fuerza and Negri. It was premiered last year at the Percussive Arts Society International Convention. And um, I watched another high school play, and I was like, we can do that, and we can do that better. And, uh, and that's not something again, but we got great kids, so why not put great stuff in front of them? So um, this is the Wind Ensemble playing um, Fuerza and Negri. And uh, if they're ready, have a go.
Justin Gavin to, to take this piece on. And it is not an easy piece. Uh, even just reading the music, I was like, ooh, boy, that's, that's a lot of notes. That's really cool. And then there's some really cool stuff being played on top of that in general. And uh, these two guys literally, literally learned this all on their own with a little bit of help from, from uh, Mr. Castro, a little bit of help from me. Um, Mr. Castro let them borrow his conch shell, which you'll see in here in a second, which is awesome. But um, these guys, I came in even on a day during spring break to, to work on this piece, to, to perform it at Walton. And uh, that's a super cool thing when you, when you have students that want to come in during the break and uh, work on stuff. And, uh, you know, because we all have this at home, right? right everybody, everybody's got like four timpani, a couple, you know, four marimbas, right? Like everybody has it at home, right? I mean, it's not just me, right? 
And so uh, these guys like came up and worked on this, and uh, it's a super, 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 super cool piece. And um, I hope you enjoy it. It's really cool. It takes them a little bit to get set up. They got a lot of different techniques in this that they're using, and uh, it's just pretty impressive. So um, yeah, so as soon as it gets set up, we'll, we'll run. I will say this one there at Walton. The, one of the cool things about going to the, the Southeastern Percussion Symposium is you don't have to haul all this stuff. You just take your small stuff, you stick your mallets, all that stuff. The, the other part is, is you end up playing on other people's equipment, which is great. Walton has phenomenal stuff. I mean, phenomenal stuff. Um, but they were both like, yeah, the Toms were moving a little bit. And it's like, you know, there's wear and tear and stuff. And so, like, now that we're back home, they're very comfortable. But you can tell uh, as they're setting up very specific as a percussionist. It's not just three valves, it's a lot of muscle memory and how the distance is to play stuff. And so like jumping into this is uh, it's pretty intense, so uh, thanks for being patient. And in, in, in some percussion ensemble concerts, as uh, I'm stalling for them, there's a movement in between every song. And it, sometimes it's a reset and a reset <laughs> and a reset of the stage. And so um, if you go to a college concert, if you go to any kind of like professional percussion concerts, we, we try to make it maximize the time so it's not you're not sitting there like waiting. But, uh, it's kind of cool to see these guys do all this stuff, so that's why they're being particular about how they're doing it, so. You also might want music when you play this piece. <laughs> Just saying, 50% of you have it. 